Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECWF, the GFS and ECWF ensembles and we'll finish up with the UK Met Office 5 day precipitation and temperature. Now if you are looking for any cold weather do look away it is looking like we're going to be going into quite a mild westerly phase there will be cold incursions at times but it's not looking like we're going to be seeing any widespread snowfall or wintry conditions it looks generally everything in from the west not looking particularly great um and yeah just a typical westerly pattern something we don't really want to be seeing if you're looking for any colder weather we're seeing this as a long-term pattern now so not only in the next sort of five days but maybe in the next seven to ten days as well and there's no real signs even in the sort of 14 day time frame of any major breakthroughs in it so it's not looking too good um if you're looking for any cold weather um unfortunately so remember if you enjoyed my videos make sure to like and subscribe and remember to follow on twitter as well the links in the description now if we start off by having a look at the latest gfs you can see we've got a northwesterly breeze coming in at the moment it's pretty blustery out there still uh but we do have a milder air mass pushing through after a bit of cold air yesterday and we're going to stay in a milder air mass for the next few days so we see quite a chilly polar mountain air mass move through by the end of this week sort of by wednesday into saturday so turning things colder could be some frost around with that but again it's going to be quite isolated there could even be some wintry showers in the north but again I'm not expecting anything too majorly with that. We'll have a look at the precipitation in the video and you'll see that it is frequent and heavy wintry showers but only last a few hours and again will only really settle over the highest peaks um, and highest ground. Now beyond that we stay with the westerly phone. You see these big Atlantic systems spinning up um, sort of X winter storms coming out of northeast America. Um, you can see big milder sectors followed by colder polar mountain air masses and we just continue seeing this colder and milder sectors. Could be going colder um, after a time if we see these colder sectors hang around, but again, highs will be five, six degrees, lows will be around freezing. Nothing too exceptional for this time of year. And right into the longer term, we just stay generally westerly. Um, we had been seeing some signals for a bit of a, a pressure build over towards Scandinavia, uh, but if we do have a look at the pressure charts, again, look at the northern hemisphere, you can see over the our side of the pole, there is no real signs of um, anything really um, giving cold weather and anything remotely blocked giving us colder now if we have a look at what the gm is showing it is very similar really westerly flows at the moment and we're going to continue to see that westerly flow um a bit of a high pressure build into the north atlantic right towards day 10 but once again it's not too significant it would be bringing in a bit of a chillier air mass so maybe a bit of a, a break there at day 10 but similarly if we do run it back a little bit much milder areas being pushed up from the south so it'll be pretty typical to see um a, a milder real mild southerly spell um, potentially giving us temperatures in the mid-teens it'll be absolutely typical uh, for the weather patterns to bring that now i know i know of course some people would enjoy that um but i think i'd rather save those weather patterns for maybe may uh, april may june time when we can start actually getting proper warmer temperatures whereas now it would just bring quite a lot of cloud um, and sort of milder uh, dreary weather out from the mid-atlantic although keeping temperatures in the mid Teen. so we wouldn't need any any big coats winter coats out there but it would still not be particularly pleasant but so yeah a bit of a change there from the gm in the longer term day 10 but once again i can't believe anything at day 10 uh, generally up until at least day 7 is looking very very mild and westerly again no real signs of anything remotely cold uh, just a few passing colder polar mountain sectors and maybe a brief bit of northerly flow for a time maybe on this gm right at the end now, if we have a look at the Eastern Blue F run, have a look at Meteor Seal, have a look at the next 10 days. Again, you just see a general westerly flow, quite a few of these purples to our north, which is deep low pressure systems bringing in westerly flows. And you can see generally it is quite a flat westerly flow, and there's no big amplification. So all those purples to our north, we want to be seeing those go green or even yellow um, in terms of um, the pressure level. And we're not seeing that. Uh, that we'd need that to see any blocking coming in uh, with with the winds coming in from the north or east. We're not seeing that at all. So it is looking generally westerly, and you follow those ice bars. Of course, southern England is coming back down from sort of the Azores down into the Mid Atlantic. So it would be really quite mild. You can see cold air to our north, um, but much milder air to our south. And I suspect we will see cold at, at times in the north, but nothing too unusual for this time of year. Um, we are sort of the peak of the cold season in terms of averages. So uh, air temperatures um, or upper air temperatures in around the minus five area is really not too unusual. And we will be seeing that at times in the north, but it won't be hold holding on for significant time. So we won't be seeing any widespread colder conditions. 
So if we do now finally have a look uh, for long range, have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see generally they are above average, not looking particularly great. And there you can see um, we're above average at the moment, it's got a slow drop away to around or below average. Um, and significantly below average around the 4th or 5th of Feb. Could be some wintry showers, especially in further northwards, minus 5 line there for about 24 to 36 hours before we see a big rise in temperature. Above, uh, above average, well above average for around the 7th of Feb. And then we stay above average, some going colder than average, but I'm not seeing uh, I'm not seeing anything significantly colder there. A few runs, outliers of course, going much, much colder, but nothing too significant. The majority staying above average, sort of oscillating between colder and milder sectors. A typical zonal sine wave sort of pattern, not looking particularly great. And if we do have a look at the ECMBF ensembles, which of course has 50 ensemble members, we'll have a look at the Midnight Run as it has fully come out. You can see similar sort of pattern. Colder sector coming through around the 4th, 5th February, and then we stay generally much milder than average, with the average uh, or the mean of all the um, of the of it, well, the average of all the ensemble members being good two or three degrees above the 1981 to 2010 mean, um, which is around minus one, minus two degrees at age so that kind of shows you where we should be this time of year uh, in terms of prayer temperatures, and you can see we are well above that. Now things can radically change, of course, but with all the stratosphere signals, the NAO, AO things that we have been looking at over the last week or two, it's not looking like um, this is sort of a anomalous blip within the models today. Um, this is a consistent signal we've been seeing across the models over the last few days and last few weeks uh, across the stratosphere. All the different indexes are all pointing towards westerly flow. Uh, did, we didn't know how long it was going to last, whether we see any incursions within it, but it's looking like definitely the first third of February is going to be westerly. Beyond that, there probably still is uh, a decent signal for westerly winds, but things can change, of course. We can see much cold weather. All I've got to point to is the beast from the east, what we saw at the end of February, early March. Now, of course, the sudden stratosphere and warming caused that, but significant cold, uh, which, would, which would give snow. It's, it's not out of the ordinary to be seeing it late February into March. So I don't want people to get their all hopes lost and, uh, and get real disappointed. Um, but at the moment, we're just going through a westerly phase. We've had quite a blocked winter so far, which hasn't delivered too much in terms of snow, um, simply because the block's been in the wrong place, wrong, wrong orientation. Um, uh, and we're yet yeah, now we're just really in a westerly phase that is likely to carry on for the next week or two but i do think things will change i think we will see uh it will turn to cold weather um, or at least some cold weather to, before the winter is out uh, i.e february march time uh, but of course we'll have to see how it does play out the stratosphere is weakening so uh, that westerly flow is going to decrease in influence over the next few weeks the next few months um before june where it's in an easterly phase so we will see um this weakening in the stratosphere so at some point this will break down and i do suspect we will see some cold weather but it may be too late for anything uh, significant uh, and maybe a bit too late for some areas in low-lying areas in, in southern england as well uh, as of course we're sort of running out of time now uh, with UV levels um, increasing in terms of sun strength and daylight time increasing. It's going to be harder and harder to keep those temperatures uh, cold enough for snow um, over uh, uh, over the next few weeks and months. Because uh, by the time we end February, um, yeah, it gets very difficult to see anything too significant outside of sort of night time. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see how it does play out, of course, though. My, I definitely do think there will be something colder coming up, but not in the next few weeks. Now, if we do finish up with the uh, precipitation and temperature, precipitation looks mainly confined to the north, but we will see precipitation in the south as well. Now, you can see today we've had a few showers around, especially in the west, but quite a lot of thick cloud. Uh, some breaks, but nothing too major. We can see some more weather fronts move through early hours of tomorrow, potentially give some more precipitation through central and northern areas, and then we'll see some more precipitation move into the north, um, and as I said, primarily northern areas, but we'll see some precipitation further southwards. Then we see a real active front move through Thursday evening. Could be real heavy rain with that, and some snow behind it, potentially, and then we see that real active northwesterly flow with polar maritime air mass through Wednesday, so it could be some very wintry conditions for some there, but once again, get mainly over high ground, and again, uh, that's for settling. We could be seeing some wintry flakes, low lying areas, but this isn't too unusual. Uh, a northwesterly polar maritime flow is not unusual. Um, it's just really the best we're getting at the moment. But that will be cut out through Saturday, and you can see cloud builds back in. We see another weather front push through um, with some milder weather before we go back into another colder sector. So it's sort of oscillating between air masses there, so nothing too sustained. Now, if you have a look at the temperatures, 
can see today temperatures got to around 10 to 12 degrees, so pretty mild indeed. Um, and through Wednesday, we can see temperatures once again 10 to 12 degrees. Um, overnight temperatures were staying well above freezing. By Thursday, though, we see that cold front moving from the northwest, turning much colder, but 10 degrees still in the day. But by night, um, it's going to be dropping down to close to freezing for many areas further northwards and westwards. And by Friday, temperatures in the day are actually going to be uh, colder than the nighttime lows um, for many areas in the south and east. Only 6 or 7 degrees are going to be really quite chilly with a cold northwesterly wind. Friday temperatures start to rise as milder air push in, 8, 9 degrees in the south, a couple of degrees colder than that in the north. And then by Sunday, we start to see colder air filter through again, but nothing too crazy in terms of cold weather. So it's not looking great if you're looking for cold weather. Generally, quite a westerly flow. Uh, it's not massively stormy like we've had over the last few days, but it's going to be mild, Atlantic driven, um, sort of. Uh, the worst weather uh, i'd say i really don't like this weather i'd much rather it would be high pressure cold and frosty or even balmy southerly winds giving temperatures in around 15 degrees even if it is a bit cloudy i'd much rather that than this sort of average to slightly above average sort of eight to ten degree days where it's not quite cold enough to be wrapped up um warm um and potentially see snow uh, and wintry conditions but then it's not mild enough really uh, to be out there doing much so yeah it's not it's not great um it's going to be rainy as well cloudy windy so yeah just really not particularly pleasant weather conditions and i'm really hoping that these don't carry on for too long but it was inevitable uh, that we were going to see a phase like this at some point throughout the winter um, but I just hope, yeah, it doesn't last too long. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.